Hey, hey group. So I ended up hopping on anyways because it was a false alarm. <laughs> so I thought some cleaning people were gonna come. They probably will still, I'm just not sure exactly what time. And I thought that they were coming right at 11 and then they didn't and then I'm like, let's just get this done. All right, so here we are. I have, uh, right, a little straw, right? <laughs> I have organizing tips for you guys. And I, um, some of them are more of like a, like little tricks that I have to just make things easier. And so here, they tend to stay more, or and they, they tend to um, be reproducible. So like something that you're not just gonna like do one time and then it's not gonna like really benefit you so you don't maintain it. So these are things that we have done around our house that, I mean, one of them dates back probably like 12 years ago, maybe, um, that we've had it. Another one, at least 10 years, one about four or five years. So these are ones like, I promise you, that we have done around here that have like, kind of withstood the test of time. So they're ones I feel comfortable sharing. And then I'm gonna throw a few other things that are just things that really help me just to keep things flowing. And you're gonna notice that most of these are in my kitchen. So you're gonna kind of get a little mini tour around my kitchen because this is like the hub of a lot of things. So like my kitchen space needs to work pretty efficiently. This is where homework gets done. This is where I cook the meals. Like we cook a lot at home. Um, this is where a lot of things happen for our whole family. And you probably have a similar spot in your house. And that's going to be like a key spot to start because you're really going to see some benefits from having a few organized tricks to just help things to flow better. And you'll see a payoff right away, which will then encourage you to do other areas of your house, up like drawers or whatever. So uh, if you read the blog yesterday, when I'm, this is just about organizing in general, if you have a space that you are trying to just clean up, you're going to divide them into three piles. You're gonna to toss into toss, save, and donate. And sorry, I wanna make sure I read it in the same verbiage that I used yesterday, that's why I'm looking down. Um, and then you're gonna look at that save pile. And this is a super important part, so that's why I'm stressing it today. Um, is that that save pile needs to then be sorted into what actually belongs in that space. So um, you have to kind of just think about the way that you use either the drawer or the cupboard or underneath your sink or whatever space that you're organizing. You have to think about how you use that and what you use most in that area. And are those the things that are currently there? Because there are some times when things just, like the most convenient drawers end up being catch-all drawers. Like they just catch all the random stuff. And then the, when you really need like a pen or a notebook, you can't find it because your most convenient drawer is filled with crap. Okay, so um, think about that when you're looking at that, what things need to be saved. And then know that just because you're gonna save them doesn't mean that they're gonna go back into that space really important just get that around your head that just because it's saving it does not mean it has to go back in that same space okay and then everything else you're going to donate which is great there's always stuff to get rid of <laughs> cut wait to cut I call it and then there's usually a fair amount of trash things that you've just kind of kept around that you were too lazy to throw away maybe it was sentimental at the moment it's not sentimental anymore um, and then you're going to go ahead and put things back into the drawer. So I'm going to show you, and I honestly didn't check this, so I'm hoping, yeah, it's actually pretty good. Okay, so this is my pen drawer, okay? And it's pen, notebooks, I have like things in our kitchen that are like easy to grab. And I'm just going to quick, quick show you around the kitchen and then I'll show you the drawer. Um, okay, so we have like our island, the chairs, this is where like the kids do a fair amount of their homework, even though we have desks and other things. And then I have this little space here. And I know not everybody has a space like this, but you might have something similar or you might, you know, use a sp specific 
um, space just for a catch-all drawer. So this, these two drawers end up being somewhat of catch-all drawers. Okay, there's kind of random stuff. And so this drawer, I have like Sharpies, markers, white out. This is like a random thing. And this was just an organizer that I found, um, I don't know, I think at Home Goods, but you can really find organizers everywhere. So don't get caught up on that. Oh, see, Sharpies in the wrong thing. And then I have pencils because my kids need to have pencils for their homework. And then I have a bunch of pens. And we have like a lot of pens in here. And sometimes I will go through them and just do a toss. Because do I really need like 50 pens in this drawer? No, I don't. Um, I need probably like five. <laughs> so if you don't have this much space, keep in mind, like you don't have to have this be the space that stores everything for like the next 10 years. This this is enough pens for 10 years. There's no reason I need to have this many. I just happen to because they end up getting replaced and moved around. These are some random services. Like this is like our tree guy. Um, I have our fireplace guy in here. I also have like our library cards. This is our library card. Um, a few punch card type of things. I go through this every once in a while and just kind of clean it out. But it is a place where I can kind of find everything. I also have a tape measure, a sharpener. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it and then look too. Um, I have a little eyeglasses thing. So these are things that I've deemed necessary for this space. Oh, and look, I actually have two of the little... So like if I was going to come in here and notice this, I'd probably do that. And that's just being anal. I'm putting the two of them together, which opens just a little bit more space up in this one. So whatever you've decided is necessary for your drawer. And then you can see in the back here, which is a little less organized, I have rubber bands. We are always seem to be needing rubber bands, which is super random, but it is. I have more pens. Again, more pens than I really need in this drawer, but I also have the space for them. And then I have some notepads. I use these when I have to write notes for the kids, for school. And things float around in the store, so sometimes you have to come back in, you have to reset. But if you have a system and the things that belong in here, then the things that don't belong in here don't get put in there. This drawer, this drawer is a little less organized. I have, um, I do have a folder here for rest, um, restaurants. So, and these are like menus from different restaurants. We've had this for a really long time. Like this is a very old one. So I should actually probably even go through and make sure some of the guy have two of the, the Chinese restaurants. But if you um, do order takeout or you do just want to decide where to go, that is um, a nice thing to have and to kind of keep handy. And then again, calculator. This is like a catch-all, another thing. Anyways, not as organized. I'm going to flip it around. So you can see how one drawer might function a little bit more efficiently than the other drawer. Okay, so next I'm going to take you over to one of my hacks. Okay, this one is a favorite. It's just a dumb little thing that we do, but I'm going to show you. All right. Okay, and we used to be able to put something on the front here. And this is the most simple thing ever. It's a dirty thing. So when we get up from the table here and we come over and this is closed and you can see we can't see any like buttons or lights or anything from the front of our dishwasher, this sign actually tells us whether it's dirty or clean. And I have this um, because many of you know I have actually three older stepchildren. So we've had kids in this house since we moved in and this is one of my oldest things because they would literally put all of their stuff on the counter and then they would say, oh, like, I didn't know if it was clean or not. Like, I was trying to do you a favor. I didn't want to put dirty dishes in the clean dishwasher. And so I literally made the sign. I was like, well, if I didn't flip the sign, then that's my fault. But the dishes go in the dishwasher. <laughs> and if you see the clean sign, then they need to be emptied. Okay, so then you empty out the dishes and then you put your dirty dishes in. So it was a way for me to keep my kitchen counter organized and clean rather than it getting caught up with dirty dishes because of a lame excuse, okay? I'm gonna walk you over here really quick and I'm gonna show you our family charging station. 
and there's not as many things on here because the kids took their phones. Um, this is more for the kids' stuff because I keep mine in a slightly different stuff and Pete his, his, he keeps his upstairs. I'm going to turn you around. This is our charging station. So um, one of the things actually broke, but it fits one, two, three, four, five. And you can see down here, there are five plugs. It's good for Android devices and it's good for um, iPads, um, Apple devices. So you just get different little mini cords. So all of the things get stored. I actually keep extra um, cords that are labeled in here are kind of put together like these are headphones and there's other cords and stuff in there for the kids' devices. And then we have this charging station. I'll tell you, this is the best thing ever. I know exactly who's plugged their phone in and if they have put it away properly. All right. The next thing that I have, this is one that has probably been around for like 12 years, maybe 13 years. I had my stepdaughter organize my spices in my pantry a really long time ago. It was just like an activity that she did. She was bored one day and I was like, hey, will you alphabetize my spices? And I wasn't like being like a super mean stepmom. Like she actually wanted something to do. And I have literally kept them alphabetized and organized in my pantry since she did that. That's how long this is just maintained because it worked. I like to use Lazy Susans because of the depth of my pantry. And so I'll show you, I'm gonna turn you around. I'll show you what I have here. All right, so <laughs> these are just, I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy. I could have tried to like work on a Cricut or got cool labels or something, but this was just for the sheer fact of trying to keep it organized. So this is A through F. They're on a Lazy Susan so I can find all of them. This is G through S, and I chose, oh, and I actually have T through Z up here. And then I also have some other, like, just bigger things that kind of get stuck in there. Um, I chose these breakdowns because when she had organized everything, that's what fit on those Lazy Susans. So if yours is not A through F, like, who cares? It's not an exact science. So I have this organized. So if I send my kids, I'm going to turn them down. If I send my kids or my husband or anybody basically, hey, can you grab me the cinnamon? They can go in the pantry and they know exactly which shelf to look on. Like, and promise me that is huge for me not to always have to be the one to run over there or for me even. Like there's some that I just don't use as often. It's really nice to at least know which shelf they're supposed to be on. So when I take them out of there, I use them. And then when I send to put them back, I put them back where I found them in alphabetized on the same Lazy Susan that I took them out of. And it really, really helps efficiency for, for cooking, for being able to use very um, herbs and spices. Um, and you could really do that for many different things, whatever your thing is that's in the kitchen. Oh, hey, Carmela's gonna come say hi. Um, oh, <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna just do a couple more things. I label my cords. So, um, and this is mostly because kids take cords places and then forget them and then just randomly grab whatever cord is closest and take them as their own, which really bugs me. <laughs> okay. So I recognize that this bugged me. And so I started to label them. So when, and I label both the cord because we have Apple stuff here, I label both the cord and the plug. So if they just take a cord and they bring it in the car, it is also their responsibility to take the cord and bring it back in so they can plug it into the wall. Um, this has saved so many arguments and bites over, you took my charger. Well, no, my charger has my name on it. And I also kind of have the rule that nine times out of 10, you have to use your own charger. You can't steal or borrow somebody else's until you find where you put yours. And I tell you, it has saved, it just has saved so much through my older kids, through my younger ones. Um, I love it. And you should too. And it takes like two seconds. So what I did is, again, I'm not super fancy here, 
but I'll show you. I literally put a little post-it note and then I put tape over the top of it. And it says Amanecker on it. That one's an Amanecker one because it's just mine because sometimes the kids will take them to sleepovers. And um, if you've ever had a kid go to sleepover and bring their charger, there's 90% of the time they're not going to bring their charger back. And they'll be sitting on someone's counter and they'll be like, oh, I don't know whose charger this is. If your name's on it, they know whose charger it is. So <laughs> another way to reduce stress, which we talked about stress last week. So, um, or two weeks ago, I suppose now. Um, some favorite items around, and then I'm going to wrap us up here. So some favorite items that I have is I love my Alexa. Um, and oops, I just said the name. <laughs> She's listening. Um, I love it. I add things onto my shopping list. I look up recipes on it. I, um, I call my kids for dinner on it. I... It, it keeps me very organized. It also links up with my phone for my calendar. So um, it will announce when things are on my calendar and going to come up. So because the kitchen is such a hub for me, I really um, appreciate um, that I'm able to have this device here. And so that's just a little plug for Amazon, I guess, Alexa. I mean, you can figure it out with Google and there's other ones too out there. Um, but a device like that, and I'll show it to you super quick. This is where we have it. So it's just here. We have this space. So like if it takes up too much space, they have smaller ones. I do like the show because it will actually, like watch this. Alexa, show me my shopping list. So it'll show me like what is on my this list. Is shopping list currently so um and we were messing around with the scan function so i can also oops uh, <laughs> i can well isn't that just the thing well <laughs> uh i messed it up right now but you know that's what me looking at two screens does i guess but I use that all of the time and it has my shopping list and then it links to my phone so when I'm at the store it has my list right on it. So I have um, like a shopping list. I have a Costco list. I have a Young Living list. Like any, I have like an Amazon, like an Amazon list, like the things that I know that I want to buy on there so that like I can just kind of go in and do it all at one time. Um, so it also makes it so I'm not forgetting things because I don't know about you, but I forget sometimes like, oh yeah, that's right. My kids needed socks and I didn't get socks when I was at the store. So um, I'll put things like that on there. And it just is one less thing for me to have to focus on and to remember. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I might make another post with a few other things I had. I had some other like devices that just make things really simple. But I think from an organizing standpoint, um, those are the things that probably make this space run the smoothest. Um, let me know what you think. With the name of those were like, oh, great. Or they're like, boring. Um, I'm cool with either. And I will try and sum up some of this in another recap so that those of you who don't have time to watch the whole thing can still get the information. Um, oh, I have one more. I lied. Okay, a reward card key ring. Okay, so this is like literally taking all those little reward cards, like the little, like, I don't know, key fob things and putting all of them into one spot. You saw I had like a drawer where I had like random things like that, like punch cards and stuff. Um, my friend has one and she keeps it in her purse and it's genius. Like, so when she gets like the, I don't know if you guys have a football team that sells like those coupon cards and then it comes with like, 10 really weird key fobs that you would never actually keep on you, but they sell it anyways for like 20 bucks. And you're like, it's for the football team, whatever. Um, she carries that with her and she literally gets use more use out of the little $20 purchase because she uses the coupons all of the time because she has them with her and they and neatly organized. Um, that's one of the things I have like on my to-do list to kind of gather those things up and to find one just one key ring to put them all on so that you literally can just grab the whole thing or keep it in your car and then you have it with you. Okay. All right. That's all I have for today. And I hope you guys had a great Thursday 
and that you learned a little something about organizing. Um, I hope you guys are loving the Hassle-Free family. Thank you.